Britt and Mike, and this is Leah. We're converting our 2021 Ford Transit van into a home on wheels. In this week's video, we're starting on our wiring and walking through the process of how we connected our reading lights, our first 12 volt outlet, a couple of 120 volt outlets, and our three-way light switches. What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I think this is episode 2146, but I'll have to check to confirm. Today, we're gonna focus on some wiring and uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that we bought. This is the first product that I wanted to show you guys. These are our bedside lights. As you can see, the end is adjustable. You can rotate it to whatever direction you want. And then on the tip here, there is a touch button. There are three dimmable settings. This one, unlike many of the ones that I read about online, the gooseneck on this is very sturdy. Whatever position you put this in, it's actually gonna stay in. And then also, it has USB capable charging, so if you wanna plug in your phone on your bedside, you can. And the mounting hardware is aluminum. Overall, from the ones that I found online, this seemed like the best fit for what we wanted. So I went ahead and installed this. I drilled some pilot holes for these screws uh, beforehand, and then uh, hand tighten these in because I don't want to over tighten it if I strip this out Then I'm gonna have to rotate this and drill some holes on the side or something like that There is room for air luckily because you can mount this in literally any orientation you like But yeah, that's how I did it and then I've gone ahead and wired everything up So red is positive on these it's black and then my black is my negative and then on the light that is white Now I'm just gonna go ahead and mount this thing should only take a second and it's also worth mentioning that I am once again using my lever nuts. These things have been just absolutely wonderful for doing all my puck lights. I'm actually starting to run low and I'm about to order more because I really do love these things. Okay, so the next light that I'm wiring up is actually the first light on the run. Therefore, I actually have two wires to this one. One goes from the DC box, which is gonna be located underneath the bed, all the way up to the light, and then the second one goes from the light to the next light on the run. So I have to connect both wires, red to red, black to black, and then also attach the positive to the red and the negative to the black on the light, and that's all there is to it. Now I can go ahead and plug this in and attach the light. Okay, so the next area that I'm gonna work on is this kitchen area. I wanna get kind of all these wires tucked out of the way as much as I can. Uh, and the first thing I'm gonna do is this 12 volt outlet that we're putting in here. And we actually opted for a cigarette style outlet. This looks like this. And there's different adapters that you can put inside these to uh, charge your phone or whatever uh, based on what you need. And the great thing about this style of outlet is that if the technology changes, like it seems to do every year or two, uh, you just buy a new adapter for it. You don't have to change out your plugs. So that's why we went with these. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some of these heat shrink spig connectors to connect everything up. Uh, these are actually uh, watertight once you heat shrink them. And after you crimp them in place, the heat shrink just gives a little extra protection on the wire. So these are really nice. And uh, I actually had to get one of these ratcheting crimping tools because if you use a regular crimping tool you will break the heat shrink uh, coating on this and it'll be useless you can get one of these for like 18 bucks on amazon Okay, so I've gone ahead and heat shrink the part that attaches to the wire, but I'm not gonna do the part that attaches to the uh, spade connector here because I might have to take this out again and, and mess with it later on when we do our backsplash and stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave those for now, but in the meantime, it's ready to install. And uh, all I need to do is push it into the hole and there's a little plastic trim ring that I've already put through on the backside and I just gotta tighten it on. Cute. 
you have the little insert piece? All right, so these are the little inserts that Mike picked out for our 12 volt plugs. And we've seen a few people do this and I thought it was a great idea just because like you said, um, if the technology changes, like for instance, this one has a USB-C and a USB-A. So if you need to charge like an iPhone or an iPad and they have like different ends on the charger, you can use either one. And it just goes right in here like a little cigarette lighter in your wall. <laughs> yeah, super convenient. And then Mike found that they also work in the cab. So in our dash, we have two 12 volt plugins and it'll work in those two. So <laughs> we'll probably lose them. We'll probably need to get a few extra, honestly. <laughs> Sometimes in our videos, people want to know why I'm not helping with the build. The real answer is because I work while Mike does this during the day. But also because I mess everything up. <laughs> That's not true. So I helped with the electrical. Let me show you what, what happened here. We have a left kitchen outlet to right kitchen outlet, which is here to here. But then we also have a right kitchen outlet to left kitchen outlet, which is here to here. They don't both actually go to the kitchen outlet. But one of them's labeled wrong. One's labeled wrong and it's supposed to go back to the distribution area underneath the bed. So I just have to figure out which one's which. <laughs> um. Okay, so to wire these up, your first wire that comes in from your power supply, the power or the hot wire goes to the uh, brass screw on top and then your uh, neutral wire goes to the silver screw on the other side. So since this is the first box on the run, we're gonna do what's called a pigtail for our ground wires. And I'll show you how that looks. Okay, so this is called a pigtail. You can't connect two ground wires to the same screw. So what you have to do in the middle of these runs is do a short ground and then you'll connect the three. Typically if it was a house, you would use a wire nut to connect the three together. We're not gonna do that because we are in a van. We're gonna use one of our lever nuts, which is rated for up to 12 AWG, which is what our wire is. So we are good there. A real tight connection. Now we just got to tuck this thing back inside and screw it down, and should be good. All right, so just like that, we're all wired in. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this off for now because we've got more to do, but now we don't have these wires hanging down in the middle of everything here. And uh, the reason that this is a GFCI is because from my understanding, the only one that needs to be a GFCI is the first one on the string. So if the first one's a GFCI, basically this will trip if there's ever a ground fault anywhere down the line. So that's why this one's GFCI, but this one and the one on the bottom are not gonna be GFCIs. Does that mean that has the reset? Yeah, it's a ground fault circuit interrupter. And if anything happens, like water gets in there or something like that, it should trip that. That's why in your bathrooms, in your house, or anywhere where there's water, I think within like six feet is supposed to have a GFCI. It's the same concept. Yeah. It just saves your wiring in, in the event something shorts out. Okay, so just a disclaimer, I am not an electrician. I am just a DIYer with some experience with electrical. That being said, I wanna talk a little bit about the boxes that I went with. These are both shallow, one gang, old work boxes. And what that means, old work, is that when you attach it, all you need to do is cut out the hole and it, and it just fills in the hole. So you pop it inside, take a screwdriver and turn it, and you just tighten these down and these tabs slowly pull up against the front of the box and that's what locks it into place. If you get a new work box, the way that you're supposed to mount those is actually to the stud of a wall. 
So those won't work for this application, at least not from what I've seen. Maybe if you had like a two by four somewhere in your garage or something like that area of your of your van, you could attach a newer box, but uh, this is the way to go for like the paneling and the walls and stuff like that. And as far as wiring up the second outlet, I wired it exactly like the first one. And then the last one is gonna be the same. So nothing new there. This is the last outlet I'm gonna wire for today, but later on I'm gonna outlet or wire another outlet that goes out into the outside area of the van that's gonna be on the end of this run. But for now, I'm just trying to clear up all the wiring that's gonna be in the walls that we can finish up now before we start doing our cabinetry. Okay guys, so I did a little diagram previously on how our three-way light switches are gonna work with the dimmer to our regular three-way, which are gonna go right here next to the uh, entryway of the van to our lights. And uh, basically there is a positive and a negative that goes into the three-way switch with the dimmer. That's gonna be located by the bed. And there are two positives and one negative that come out from that uh, same switch. So the way that wires up is the first positive goes to the top of your three-way switch. The second positive goes to the bottom of your three-way switch. And the black goes directly to your light string. So here's how I have that three-way switch wired up. I don't have red, red, black cable. So I'm improvising and using some red electrical tape on the ends to distinguish which one's which. So my white is a red, my green is a red, and uh, obviously the red from this cable is a red. My blacks match up. So my blackout goes directly to the light string, which is this wire here. And then the other light string cable comes in to the switch as well. And when all this is hooked up, we'll be able to turn the lights on and off from either the bed or by the door. Hopefully that's not too confusing. What's up everyone? It is another beautiful California day. This is one of the last nice, cool, cloudy days that we're probably gonna get for the rest of the year. I'm enjoying the 60 degree weather, the overcast, and uh, gonna finish knocking out this electrical today. Also, if you spent any time living in the central California Valley, then you know summers here are not forgiving and I do not want to be here in the 105, 110 degree heat building out this van. So we've got to start making some progress on our cabinetry and, and our uh, electrical and all our finishing stuff and just try to get out of here before it gets too hot. We have three 12 volt three-way switches here. So in this clip, Mike is wiring up the other two with the same process as he showed earlier for the first switch. First, he's stripping the wire and taping the positives red, then attaching spade connectors to connect our wires to the prong on the back of the switches and heat shrinking them on. All right, here's what the finished product looks like. All right guys, I know that was a pretty small sample size, but hopefully I gave you a good overview of how we intend to wire up all of our 12 volt outlets, our 120 volt outlets, our switches, uh, puck lights, and our uh, bedside lights. So it covers most of our bases to be honest. And I think it gives you a pretty good starting point anyways of you know how this stuff is gonna go together. But with that, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. Thank you for following along and catch us on the next one. Bye.